Alrighty then. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We're live. <laughs> Thank you so much for everyone out there um, joining me um, as we get this bad boy started. All right, hold on, give me a second. Just making sure we're live, we're going, and we're doing our thing. So again, you know, for anyone out there that's new to this format, you know, this is the fun part. This is the you know, either entertaining part or the annoying part. You know, the fact that it's live and we got to deal with a little bit of this because sometimes later on you're watching this episode and you're like, man, this guy talks a lot of crap. I just want him to answer the question. So anyway, shout out to everyone out there that's watching in uh, every capacity, whether you're watching right now at the moment, hanging out there, or, um, you know, you're going to watch this in the future. In the year 2035. Can you imagine? All right. So this question, all right, which is how much does a typical Mexican get paid in Mexico? You know, because that's where we are. We're in Mexico. And a lot of people want to know because we've talked about it multiple times, you know, in many capacities. You know, this, the part of, uh, you know, the gentrification and, uh, you know, the strength of the dollar, I mean, sorry, the weakness of the dollar, the strength of the peso, the strength of the Mexican economy. You know, we've talked about it multiple times, but, you know, um, we've um, and I'm sure you've also heard in the past how little a Mexican makes, you know, how little a Mexican gets paid um, and so on and so forth. I'm sure a lot of you guys are also aware there's a lot of Mexicans and other immigrants that move or cross into the USA, Canada, in order to work, make more money, come back home, do their thing. And, um, you know, how all of that has been changing. And, uh, you know, uh, we're talking about wages right now because that's changed as well. You know, believe it or not, especially in the last several years, it's definitely changed, like literally in the last several years. Uh, so it's, it's, it's been an in, in interesting growth. You know, as the rest of the world, you know, is losing, you know, value out of their currency, they got to work harder, you know, for the same bag of potato chips and so on and so forth. You know, Mexico's reaping the rewards of the complete opposite, you know, meaning that they have to, you know, work less to get that same bag of potato chips. And so they work very hard. So now they're buying 15 bags instead of one. So and. You know, it's just so many things like that. You know, remember, we're seeing a giant boom in the economy and uh, we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about what the typical average Mexican makes these days compared to what it was before. Give me one second. I just realized I still I left the fan on. Um, I usually have to have the air conditioner on and I have to turn the fan off because it messes with the noise and the quality of the video uh, and the sound quality and all that stuff going forward. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about how what an average Mexican makes and all that good stuff. So, you know, so people can get some context, okay? So that people can really understand what I'm talking about. Because remember, I talk about it in my videos all the time that if you make, you know, again, things are changing and I'm going to have to update this going forward because, again, as the exchange rate, you know, changes you know meaning that again the peso gets stronger the dollar gets weaker you know i gotta change this um before not too long ago you sh you were able to live like a king you know on a thousand us dollars a month now you might need more like a thousand two hundred you know maybe a little more all right to really live good or you know at least what i determined to be good you know i know a lot of people you know still think i live like a bum even on that and uh, really, you know, a lot of people come out here and they say, hey, Jose, you're wrong. You know, in order for me to live like a queen or a king, I got to spend over three thousand dollars a month. OK, you know, I get it. You know what I mean? But anyways, all I'm saying is that, you know, um, things are changing in the sense that like as your dollar or your Canadian dollar or whatever euro, um, it buys you less pesos and things are getting more expensive for you. Well, kind of the opposite is happening for Mexico, meaning Okay, inflation is happening all over the world, and same here, you know, meaning that, you know, things are going up in price incrementally, you know, in, in, in small amounts, not compared to other places where the prices are going up a lot. But in Mexico, they're going up a little bit. And, um, you know, on top of that, so are the wages. The wages are exponentially increasing. So as the things in Mexico are getting a little bit more expensive, the wages are getting way higher. 
like way higher, like extremely high. Because I'm looking at some numbers here right now, and um, you know it says that like you know um, you know and the average skilled worker you know uh, back in the day you know would make around um, 740 750 US dollars, okay, a month, and uh, these days which is you know around 17,000 pesos. But these days you know again when you average it to what's happening in 2023, okay, not 2018. All of a sudden, that goes from 750 to, you know, 1,800. It's like almost doubled or a little more. So now like a typical average Mexican family, like a middle class family, is bringing in close to $2,000 a month. So that's why, why you know, I, I keep bringing up the fact that like, you know, back in the day, you used to be able to come out here with like 1,500 bucks, you know, a month and uh, a really good exchange rate and the fact that Mexicans weren't making that much money and all this other stuff. And yeah, of course you were a king, but now, you know, you're, you're coming out here with your measly, you know, $1,200 a month and, you know, the average middle class family is doubling that, you know, an average middle class family is bringing in like, like 2,500. And you already know they're paying less rent and they're paying a lot less cost than you are. All right. So imagine how much money they get to really save and really spend and really, you know, again, that's what you see them all with new cars, buying homes, you know, going out to the fancy mall, you know, doing all these things that you used to do. But now they're doing it and they can afford it. And that's why, again, I always laugh. At the whole idea, you know, when they keep saying, oh, the gringos are gentrifying, the gringos are bringing up the prices. No, no, there's not that at all. You know what I mean? It's, uh, the, you know, supply and demand. And again, inflation and so many other factors. But the fact that, again, the typical Mexican these days is making a lot of money compared to what they used to make. And, um, you know, the minimum wages, for example, a minimum wage, okay, a minimum wage, all right, is like around $250 a month. All right. That's a minimum wage. But nobody gets paid minimum wage these days anymore. You know, you know, you have to be working at like OXO. You know, you got to work at a grocery store. You know, you already know that most of these individuals, once you live here, you know, most of these individuals, that's like one of their first jobs. And they're just working that job because they're going through school. They're whatever. You know what I mean? Like it's just a stepping stone to the next thing. And that's it. You know, you're not really going to find people that have been working at, you know, for a minimum wage job, you know, for 15 years out here, that kind of thing. Because most people, they know they can't survive off that. And they just start their own business for, for crying out loud. And uh, they might just work at a, you know, minimum wage job for a little bit so they can save a few bucks so they can start their own thing. Um, but long story short, you know, min no one even gets paid the minimum wage. Even if you're working at some of these places, you know, like at the OXO, a grocery store, uh, you know, the, the AT&T store, wherever you're working, you know, you're not getting paid that little. You know, that's like super like day labor all the way bottom rung, you know, um, and even then. It's not that at all. In fact, the typical laborer out there is making a lot more because I was, I was, you know, looking at, you know, just some uh, job offers that they had out there, you know, for pretty average jobs. You know, let's say you want to do like some data entry, uh, personal assistant. Um, you wanted to do, you know, just a re just regular jobs. You know, that are uh, the uh, what is it a rung above, you know, working at the convenience store. Um, and they're getting paid like close to like $800 a month. So you're going from like $250 a month all the way bottom rung, you know, a little bit over bottom rung. Let's say you're the manager or let's say that, you know, you're working at a better job, you know, so you're getting paid like 500 bucks a month. All right. And this is like super minimum, you know, all the way bottom. And then a regular normal job is like around 800 bucks a month. And again, this is still all bottom rung, you know. But once you start getting into the skilled labor these days, now they're starting to make more money. You know, doctors are making more money. Engineers are making more money. Um, if you've got your own business, you're making more money. If you're a high skilled employee laborer, let's say that, you know, you're a lawyer, um, a um, what do you call it? Um, you know, other people that do paperwork stuff, you know, what I mean, all, all kinds of paperwork jobs, you know, what I mean, you know, uh, important jobs. I don't know. <laughs> You know what I mean? I, hey, look, I'm just a lowly cook, okay? That does you th that you know that all of a sudden found themselves years later making YouTube videos, all right? So you know, please forgive me if I don't know all the office lingo and all that other stuff. But long story short, you know, people are getting paid more, all right? And uh, most people are finding that again, if they do their own thing, you know, start their own business, which is very easy to do in Mexico, you can make even more money. 
And that's what most people end up doing. In fact, when you see shortages here of workers, you know, there's, you know, there's jobs that are always trying to fill positions. The reality is, is because most people end up just leaving because they just, you know, they find it more profitable and a lot more freeing to start their own business and do their own thing and be their own boss. And it's like a major thing out here. But, you know, long story short, you know, what I mean, um, the average salary these days, you know, for a typical Mexican, which I was pretty surprised to find out, like middle class, a little bit above middle class is like a little, it's like around $2,000 or a little bit over $2,000. And, um, you know, a high salary earner, you know, a high salary earner would be, um, let me see if I can do the math here. Hold on. Uh, a high salary earner would be, you know, like around eight thousand dollars, you know, nine thousand dollars, you know, and that's like, you know, very high position, you know, um, you know, monthly salaries, which again is like a small minority, maybe five percent of the population, you know, um, is gonna have something like that. But what I'm saying about you know earning, okay, so if all of a sudden you're working just a regular middle class family job, middle class thing, right, and you're earning close to two thousand dollars a month all right and by the way this is not every case okay remember that's what i'm giving you the scale all right there's all kinds of people that are earning as little as 250 bucks a month all the way to like around a thousand bucks a month and that's like a good majority of the population but then you know you're starting to see like let's say 25 percent of the of the population all right so 50 percent will fall into that bottom rung category right from 250 bucks to a thousand dollars all right and then Seven, twenty-five percent, okay, of of that. So fifty percent would be under a thousand dollars. Twenty-five percent of the population above that would be over a thousand dollars, and then you know something, you know, they start varying, and then let's say like five percent would be like uh, very little. You know what I mean? Like I mean very a lot. You know, five percent would be making five uh, percent make eight thousand dollars a month, and five percent or ten percent or fifteen percent, you know, something like that would be making you know like a. Uh, 250 to 500 bucks a month all right i don't know if that makes any sense i'm sorry just a lot of numbers everywhere but let's just again let's just say 25 30 percent of the population is making around two thousand dollars a month so think about it a lot of those people that are making that amount of money all right and they're just working a above average job they, they think to themselves a lot of times they're like wait a minute if I make this amount of money just doing this job, imagine how much I can make if I have my own business. And so now here comes the kicker. With all these foreigners coming in, well, well guess what? You know, a lot of these entrepreneurs that have already been making pretty good money, all of a sudden like, hey, wait a minute, I got some extra skills that I can put to work here. Let me cater to some foreigners. And again, it's not just people like us. All right, I'm talking about all kinds of foreigners from all over the world with a lot of money and a lot of everything, okay? Not just us, all right? A lot of us are poor schmucks, all right? But long story short, they're tapping into that. They're tapping into the new economy that's uh, starting up in Mexico. Again, most Mexicans can afford to go out, to buy things, to do things. So a lot of Mexicans are like, hey, wait a minute. Let me just start up my business. Let me just start a cat cafe. You know, you know those cafes where they got cats. I don't know. I'm just throwing something out there. You know, they're taking bigger risk, bigger chances on businesses. And, and, and again, they're the ones that are gentrifying because now they say, hey, wait a minute. Most people can afford to go to these places now. Most people can afford to enjoy these places now. Let me cater to my own people that are making more money. And also some people are catering, again, to the wealthy foreigners. Again, I'm talking about someone from Saudi Arabia. Someone that's coming from, you know, there's so many foreigners moving out here. Okay, don't be thinking it's just people like us, all right? Um, so that's the thing. And you know I mean, all of a sudden now these Mexicans, those are the ones that are finding that they can make $8,000, $9,000 a month. And it's like, why the hell would they ever go pick some strawberries in Canada or in Florida, especially when they're getting kicked out, you know, of uh, some of these places, you know, and they're, you know, many, in many cases, they're just coming back home because they're realizing why am I, you know, living in another country under these harsh conditions to just make what I can basically make in my own country now these days. All right. And remember the kicker. Remember when I was talking about China last week and I was, uh, you know, how Mexico is going to compete with China? Well, guess what? You know, the typical Mexican still gets paid less. OK, the typical Mexican still gets paid less than the typical Chinese. And their potential for growth when it comes to wages 
<laughs> it's exponential because they're still towards the bottom. Most Mexicans still, you know, again, most average Mexicans are still not, you know, towards the bottom com compared to most other countries when it comes to wages. So imagine when they start making more in the years to come. So, and, and again, the fact that they have a, a, an education on what money is, how to save, you know, don't trust the banks, don't trust the government, trust yourself, trust your, your you know, be your own bank, have things like gold and silver, buy property, um, work hard, save money, play hard, you know, live, have fun, enjoy family. So imagine all that stuff put together, you know, what a monster superpower Mexico is going to be. So that's why, again, you know, I see a lot of uh, gringos out there, you know, like us, you know, they come out here and they start getting upset with things getting more expensive and harder to afford um, when they just, you know, and then they want to blame other foreigners or they want to blame people like us, you know, making videos on this topic. And they just don't want to realize the simple fact that the typical Mexican these days are, is probably making more than you. You know what I mean? And the typical Mexican these days works a lot harder than you. And the typical Mexican these days is a lot younger than you. And I could go on and on. And then when you start adding all this up, you're like, oh, boy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's the reality of it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Mexico's on the up and up. And a lot of foreigners that are coming out here, you know, they got their, you know, titties in a bunch. I don't know what else to say. Um, you know, they just cannot handle the, the, the reality of what's going on. You know, they, they, so they, they just get upset and they want to blame somebody or something else. When the reality is, it's that, you know, it's just simple, basic economics, you know, that I, I can barely explain here. But if you live out here, you get to see it because you get to see and you see it in all my videos. All right. I was making a video the other day and I was walking through the hood, I guess, you know, what I mean, just a regular neighborhood, you know. And, you know, you see people driving Audis and stuff, you know, what I mean, and driving, you know, BMWs and driving, uh, you know, you know, the fancy cars, you know, nice cars, you know, when they're just going to their humble taco spot. All right. OK, it's not you. You're not coming out here and buying a BMW. You're not coming out here and spending, you know, no, you know, some of you guys are, but not everybody, especially people watching my channel. You know, a lot of you guys are just looking for a way to, I don't know, survive and you're looking for a way to cross the border and, uh, you know, start brand new. Um, so, yeah, this is something that, you know, this is a real reality of it as well. You know, what I mean, you got to, you know, you got to either assimilate and take advantage of, you know, the country that you're moving in. And uh, I don't know, maybe realize a Mexican dream for yourself and um, and stop thinking, all right, about how, you know what I mean? Like, oh, the dollar's king, the U.S. is king, you know, the blah, blah, blah. Mexico's is a poor third world country. It's not. And whatever. You know, at the end of the day, you're going to find out either the, easy, the hard way or the easy way. Or what is it? The easy way, the hard way, whatever. You're going to find out at some point or another. So you might as well make bones with it or make your peace with it or what have you. So for me, you know, I, I, that's why I've assimilated into the Mexican culture as much as I can. And I'm constantly trying to. And I constantly encourage you guys to do the same. But, you know, again, Mexico. All right. And the rest of the first world. Okay. So the first world which I'm just going to consider USA, Canada, Europe, any country in that realm, they're on the downslide. We all know this, okay? Every country in Europe is... <laughs> the USA, <laughs> Canada, <laughs> all of them. Mexico is on the up and up, okay? And again, you, 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 I don't want to get into it. There's not what we're talking about here, but you can see... The USA already trying to like cause some sh trouble. Hey, we're going to go in there and invade because, you know, you guys have a problem. You know, the drug situation. But anyways, long story short, you already see that starting to happen. Uh, it's not going to happen because they, these countries, you know, the U.S. relies too much on Mexico. But um, but long story short, you've seen both countries heading in completely opposite directions. All right. So, you know, you should consider that when you're, you know, thinking about not just moving out here, but, you know, when you're looking at what's going on around you and you're seeing all this growth and you're seeing, you know, all these Mexican people prosper, you know, all these Mexican people, you know, afford, you know, to go eat at these fancy restaurants and you can't and so on and so forth. And it's, you know, again, think about it. You know what I mean? You got to be making, you know, some money to be able to live like a middle class Again, a middle class Mexican these days is making close to two thousand dollars. So even if you're coming out here with two thousand or two thousand five hundred, you're not living like a king anymore. You're living like a middle class family. All right. So just keep that in mind. And if you want to live like a king out here, you got to be bringing in some money. Now, you really, really want to live like a king for a few bucks. There's a bunch of other countries that are that have 
failing currencies at the moment. Shit, sorry. <laughs> you can go to Japan. You can go to Argentina. You can go to a lot of these fancy, nice places. And trust me. Because look, you know what? It's funny. Because me and Christian, a lot of times we watch YouTube videos together. Um, travel videos, uh, food videos, whatever, right? That's the things that we like. And so we're, we watch videos of people traveling to Japan, to you know all these other countries, right? And we do the exchange rate in pesos. And we're like, man, that's cheaper than Mexico. All these places are cheaper than Mexico. And in fact, you know, don't be surprised if you see Jose Lambo and Gizmo and Christian in uh, in Tokyo one day. You know what I mean? And uh, and it's yeah, we can afford it because you know, again, with the exchange rate, you know, you're like, wait a minute, the peso is a lot stronger than the yen. The peso is stronger than all these other currencies. What's going on here? You know, so um, that has been also kind of like a kicker because you know we watch these videos and they're recent videos and they put the prices and stuff like that and we, we're gonna we're doing it in pesos now and like oh my god christian could they all that they paid you know 100 pesos for what that's five dollars <laughs> or whatever it's more than five dollars these days but all i'm saying is that you know um you're seeing a lot more mexicans travel doing travel videos doing all kinds of you know they want to be vloggers they want to be because mexico's moving on up and they're constantly moving on up they're going to continuously move on up and um you know they've been uh, you know um what is it they've been you know most children and young people um they're constantly you know being fed that hey you got to learn to work you got to work for yourself you got to sustain yourself you got to this you got that, 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 that you can do whatever you want but just make sure that you got you know you can put food on the table you know that kind of stuff so make sure you got a career you got a job you got a this look you can go to school you know it's only going to cost you like i don't know five dollars you know for a semester <laughs> you remember how what the u.s used to be where you know education used to be extremely cheap um so things like that, you know what I mean? That's how it is in Mexico. So the typical Mexican not only is making a lot more than they've ever made in their whole ever life, you know, and like in a long time. In fact, let me see if I can bring up some, uh, there was a chart that I saw here and I wanted to show you. I thought it'd be pretty, pretty interesting. Let me see. There it is. Dang. I mean, this should, you know, this should be enough. So look at this chart right here, down here. All right. And you get to see, uh, you know, the, the exponential growth in the wages. Look at that. You know, in fact, it looks it looks like the chart of uh, the U.S. money supply since we've been printing in the last few years. All right. So I'll leave it there. I don't know what else to say about that. So, all right, let me read some comments. By the way, shout out to Diana with the two dollars. Shout out to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Larger. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK, OK, let me see. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for all the kind words, pirate, pirate. <laughs> all right, I'm in Acapulco and I see Mexicans driving around in brand new nice cars, own very expensive condos, and I ask myself, where are they getting all this money from? Well, they're working for it. Most of them are working for it. That's the thing. And that's the thing. It's like, it's like, a, it's a blow. To the typical American Canadian, to the typical person that comes as a foreigner to Mexico, and, uh, you know, we believe all the propaganda that we've been fed as to how Mexico's poor and they got nothing out here. And then all of a sudden we see it's a complete opposite. And again, it's funny because a lot of people are like, oh, they're gringo pricing me. No, they're not. That's a price for everybody. You, you just can't afford it. Or you probably think it's expensive now. That's all it is. But trust me, all the other Mexicans are paying for it. Henceforth, the line of people waiting to buy the same product for the same price. So move it along if you can't afford it anymore. That's the way it is, all right? So, yeah, you know, a lot of people just don't, uh, you know, they don't realize that. But yeah, anyways, Mexico is not a third world country, correct? You know, Valerie is saying, was it? Um, Verlin, Verlin, anyways. But I know most people back home in Canada think so. They expect me to be in a resort living away. Yeah, exactly. So, um, uh carmool says uh hello jose love your live chats glad to see the new presidential candidate um shine bomb from morena yes um she is an engineer fluent in english did her master's phd usa go morena yeah so um you know i don't i don't like talking politics i don't like to talk about all that stuff on here because you know that's you know whatever beyond my uh scope of understanding but um he, he brings up a great point. You know, Mexico has been doing pretty great under this president and uh, this regime. And um, the next president is probably going to be, you know, same party, same 
everything. And uh, and that is that person. And then this new president is going to be a, a female, speaks English, engineer, you know, everything the guy just said. So, yeah, look her up. Look her up for anyone out there that's interested in, in a little bit more of uh, who the next president of Mexico probably will be. And again, you see that and you see, you know, again, you see the current president, but then you see the successor and you're like, oh, yeah, no, Mexico's going to be doing awesome. You know, it's like, and then you watch interviews with this lady. But remember, she speaks English and you're like, oh, OK, yeah, all right. OK, I see. I see what Jose's talking about. Anyways, uh, Hannah says factory farms exist in Mexico. You're, yeah, you're right. I mean, we got factory farms right here, you know, right outside the city. Yes, I agree. Um, Melissa says, uh, do you see or have experienced hostility from Mexicans, um, on Americans? No, 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 no. I mean, look, you'll see it. Of course you're going to see it. There's millions of people that live here. Okay. It's 140 million Mexicans. Okay. And, uh, yeah, you know, of course you're going to find a few Mexicans, you know, just like you find a few Americans that are racist, you're going to find a few Mexicans that are racist and they're intolerable and all that stuff. But the reality of it is that, no, if, if you're ever going to see any kind of, you know, uh, violence towards Americans, hate towards Americans, you know, any kind of, you know, anything like that towards Americans is usually another American. <laughs> I've said it many times, you know, American on American crime, gringo on gringo crime, you know, um, you see it all the time, all the time. In fact, you know, someone was reaching out to me today. Hey, Jose, I follow you. You're great. Can you do a video on this? I said no. But anyways, but the topic was, again, somebody that was renting from a gringo that was renting from another gringo and basically... Yeah, they shafted them, you know, they, you know, they kicked them out of the house, they took all their money, you know, they, they did all these horrible things. And the gringo, you know, the person that was renting is like, oh, my God, how could they do this? You know, they are. Yeah, exactly. Gringo on gringo crime. So, yeah, a lot of times, you know, again, that's why I, I tell you even more, you know, hey, you got to learn to hang out with the Mexicans, make friends with the Mexicans, live with the Mexicans, and you will not have a problem. But if you're going to stick in your expat enclaves and you're going to be only dealing with Americans and they, they know their laws and they know that, that it's anarchy and they can do whatever they want and no legal repercussion. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're going to they, you know, they're going to stick it to you. What is it? They're going to give it to you without any Vaseline. Right. Like they like like uh, like my friend back in the day used to say. So. Uh, Hawks Bill says you should pretend that you are a tourist. The Mexicans aren't too crazy about expats. I pretend I'm a tourist all the time. Are you kidding me? When I'm filming my videos and I'm doing my thing. That's not true at all. I mean, Hawks Bill. Listen, the thing is, a lot of times when they are hostile towards you, let's say you're the Mexican that doesn't like you or you're finding out that there's a lot of Mexicans that don't like you and it's constant everywhere. It's probably you, bro, or, or, or girl, whoever it is, but it's probably you. All right. Think about that. Just have a little bit of self-awareness. If you go, no matter where you go, um, they don't like you. It's probably you. All right. So <laughs> it's just just straight up, you know, just being, you know, giving you the facts. All right. <clears throat> um, we're all beep says, is it worth being a dual citizen? Yeah. Why not? Of course it is. Yes. Yes. I plan on becoming a dual citizen. Yeah, of course it's worth it. But it's for it depends on what you mean by worth it. Why you want to be a dual citizen. So. But yeah, anyways, I hope this video was enlightening um, to what the fact is as to what Mexican wages are. Um, look, so look, this is part of the research I was doing. But see, some of these numbers are a little skewed. Um, I did some more research here. OK, and you can really see, you know, um, what more of the prices are. So again, we did this right here, the median salary. OK, which is the average salary, which is approximately 50 percent of the population. So 50 percent of the population. All right. Is making. 390,000 pesos a year. So let's just do some quick math. I got my calculator out here, okay? So 390,000, okay? Sorry, 390, okay? 390,000, okay? Divided by 17, all right? That's the exchange rate, okay? So it's 17 pesos to the dollar. I know it's higher, okay? I know it's higher, but I'm just gonna do 17 for the sake of it, because by the time you're watching this video in the future, it might be 17 or lower. So 17. So $390,000. I mean, sorry, 390,000 pesos divided, okay, by 17 equals 
okay? 23,000 approximately, $23,000 a year, okay? So let's just do that, 23,000 divided by 12, all right, right? 12 months in a year, that's $1,916, right? So $1,900, so 50% of the population right now, because this, this is a current number, okay? 50% um, of the population right now, today, Okay, is making 1,900 or more, okay? So again, to give you context on that, okay? So yes, you know, 25, okay, now that's 50%, okay? Now you can look at other numbers here, again, right here. You know, 25%, see, for the average, right here, hold on, let's move it up. For the average salary in Mexico, 25% of the population is earning less than 20, than 2,800, okay? And 75% and is earning more, Okay, read that right there, okay? So now let's do the math, okay? Um, the 20, the, that's what I was trying to get. That's what I was trying to talk about earlier, you know, my mumbo jumbo. All right, so let's just even it out to 220, all right? 220, make the numbers a little more round like me. <laughs> all right, so two, 220,000 pesos a year, okay? So that divided by 17 equals, okay? 1,000, no, I'm no, sorry, sorry. It equals 13,000, okay, 13,000 a year. So again, $13,000 a year divided by 12 is a little over, again, it's 1,100, give or take, okay? So they're earning 1,100 a month, all right? So 25% or lower is making that 1,000, okay? 50%, okay, so again, you're seeing the numbers there, okay? So 50% of the population making close to 2,000, okay? Add 25% to that, okay? So, you know, 25% is gonna be making less, is gonna be making 1,000 or less, okay? So that's the ones that I was telling you about, 1,000 to 250, all right? And then right here, um, you see, and then 25% of the population, as you guys can see there, 25% is making over a million. Okay, so that's a lot of people. Think about that. Okay, ah, why is this thing? Oh, there we go. Sorry, ah, what, what happened there? Okay, okay, sorry, I had a little brain fart with the computer there. So, look at that. Okay, 75% of the population is making over a million. So, what is over a million? So again, 20, that's 25%, okay? 25% is a lot of people, man. All right, people, all right? Guys listening out there. So again, 1 million, okay? So 165, let's just go with the exact number this time, all right? Okay, so that divided by 17 is 62,000, okay? So think about that, okay? 25% of the Mexican population is making $60,000 or more a year. So 62,600 to be exact, okay? So that divided by 12, okay, is over $5,000, okay? So over 25%, or, or just 25, 25% of the population of Mexico is making over $5,000 a month, all right? And then, 50% of the population is making $2,000 a month. And then the remaining 25% is making $1,000 or less. All right? So you can get some context to that. All right? So even now when we're even doing this number, because look, there's that whole financial requirement thing. Remember, um, a lot of people are like, oh, why are the financial requirements so much? Well, look at that. If, 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 right now, even if you if you meet the extreme of the financial requirements, meaning that whatever it is, uh, three thousand eight hundred, four hundred, four thousand dollars a month, whatever it is, it's still not. You're still not even in the twenty five percent anymore. I mean, back then, back then, you, you know, you if you made this amount of money, if you made over five thousand dollars a month, um, you were in the 5% or in the 1% of the Mexican population. Now you're in the 25% of the population. All right. 17 is the exchange rate, uh, Raymond. So it's 17 pesos to the dollar. It's really 1765 or something like that, but we're just going with 17. So.
Do, 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 do. So uh, Hannah says median is average between high and low. It doesn't mean 50%. It means 50% earn more or f and 50% less. Well, again, listen, guys, you guys can do your own research on this. You know, if my research is not enough, all right, or if I'm not explaining it correctly or whatever. Um, but it says it right there. You know, it says what this means. Come on. Here we go. See, look, it says it right there. It says what this means is that approximately 50% of the population earns less and 50% of the population earns more than that, okay, amount. So, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter, you know what I mean? Like whether we're, you know, discussing, you know, if the, you know, again, I know this is just the average, you know, I know some people are going to be making 1,500, you know, they're making 1,300. Some of them are making 2500 I know. I get that. You know what I mean? There's people all over this. You know, we're just talking averages. But long story short, even on the low end of the spectrum, okay? On the low end of the spectrum, like I was saying, just a data entry job, you're getting paid like 800 bucks an hour. I mean, 800 bucks a, year, uh, a month, all right? Um, and really, if you're working at OXO, if you're working, you know, like the lowest rung job, you're working at the grocery store, you're working as, you know, just simple labor, um, then you're probably going to be making $500 uh, a month, $800 a month. But again, once you just have a little bit of skill and you're just going a little bit above and beyond, all of a sudden you're starting to earn a thousand dollars a month, give or take. And obviously, the more skill, if you have your own business, and I can go on and on, you know, you're again the average Mexican is making close to two thousand a month, and twenty five percent, give or take, of the population is earning close to five thousand a month. And again, I agree. You know, not everyone's making. Not everyone in that twenty five percent is making five thousand. Some people are making a lot less. Some people are making a lot more, a lot more, mucho more, okay? But at the end of the day, all I'm trying to get at, all I'm trying to show you guys, all I'm trying to talk about in this video is to let you know that the typical Mexican is making money. And that's a lot of reasons why you're, you're seeing the economy grow. You're going to see it continue to grow, and you're seeing prices that are increasing. And again, yes, there's worldwide inflation. Let's not forget that. But... A typical Mexican is not going to feel it if their wages are doubling and tripling, okay? At the same time that you're seeing this inflation, while your wages, while your currency is going in the complete opposite direction, you're, you're losing value, okay? Like I was saying earlier, you know, again, right now, I look at videos on Japan, on Argentina, on all these countries around the world um, that are normally very expensive, like Japan, and all of a sudden, it's like, oh, wait a minute, if I go with my Mexican pesos... Japan is cheap. Japan is just as cheap as, I don't know, name like Guatemala. I don't know. Actually, Guatemala is more expensive than Mexico. But what I'm saying is that it's cheap. You know, and all these countries are now cheap compared to Mexico. But again, it all depends. If you're in Mexico and you're making Mexican money and you're in the Mexican economy, and like I encourage you guys to do, remember, it's not for everybody, but for those of you guys who can do it, you're going to be fine. You're going to be sitting pretty. But for all everyone else that relies on the dollar, on the Canadian dollar pace whatever it is on the euro on all these other things if you're if you're really relying on all these other external things and you're not really participating in the mexican economy outside of just spending money it's it's going to get more difficult as time goes the more you participate within the mexican economy the more you participate within your mexican community the more you become a mexican remember if you're going to move to mexico you might as well you know be mexican but anyways the more you do that the better it's going to go for you the less you do that the more difficult it's going to be. That's it. All right. And I, I've been talking about this multiple times and, and multiple videos. And this video, this question, okay, that Roger asked me, shout out to Roger out there, was just to, again, emphasize and to bring to light what a typical Mexican is making these days, okay? And the reality of what it is, you know what I mean? Because, you know, most Mexicans are making a lot more money. And look, granted, you know, a lot of Mexicans that you know on a daily basis are making, you know, probably under $2,000. But that's $2,000. A lot of you guys thought that they were making under $1,000. All right? And that's a thing. You know, um, yeah. You know what I mean? If you're coming out here on a $1,200 budget, just know that you're a poor Mexican. Okay? Or, I mean, that's it. I don't even know what else to say. Or just a low-class Mexican. Okay? And that's, I mean, which is what I am. I'm just an average, low, middle-class, low Mexican. I don't make over 2000 a month. Are you kidding me? No way. 
You know what I mean? I, 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 that's why I talk about the budget so much. You know what I mean? Because I, I make like around, you know, if I'm lucky, you know, a thousand something, you know, a thousand bucks, a thousand, a little 200, whatever, in order to pay my bills, you know, and that's kind of basically enough. Thank God I'm in Mexico and, um, you know, things are, again, I live like a Mexican. So again, even in a thousand, 200 bucks, I'm living pretty good as you guys can see from the numbers, but you know, I got to make more money. I got to make more pesos. I got to do whatever I can in order to, to really make it in this economy going forward. It's not like I'm going to have to, I'm, it's not like I can rely on my dollars or I can rely on, no, 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 no. I, that's why I'm starting a business. That's why I'm working, you know, out here, uh, you know, with individuals and earning pesos and doing all these other things because uh, you got to. So gang, gang, that's right. Cookie gang. Um, what do I miss most about the USA? The food. That's it. But just certain food, you know, like a Philly cheesesteak. That's it. Other than that, nothing. Not a dang thing. Not, you know, maybe, you know, I miss, you know, the environment. You know, I, I miss, you know, like, uh, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like the mountains and the, you know, certain things, you know. Um, but whatever. I'll survive. <laughs> But anyway, so I really hope that this video was uh, shedding some more light on the situation um, so you can understand, you know, more about what uh, what's going on out here, you know, when it comes to that. Um, you know, again, you can see another chart right here. You know, this chart is, uh, you know, can tell you pretty much exactly where, where we, you know, again, look at just the last few years. Look at from 2020. All right. You can see it. I know you can't see my mouse, but just go 2020 going forward. Look how much it's increased. OK, in 2020, it was 100. OK, whatever this metric is, I don't know what it is. But anyways, at 2020, it was 100. OK, or a 20, a little into 2020. OK, and from 2020 going forward, we went from 100 to, you know, we're over 200. OK, look how quickly wages and all this change and the buying power of the peso. And I could go on and on. So. There you go. And I hope, I really hope that this uh, video, that this content, you know, this question, you know, was very uh, helpful to you guys. So you guys can, again, be more informed, which is what I'm trying to do. You know, at the end of the day, you know, you shouldn't be listening to me or any other YouTuber out there and only us. You know, you should be listening to everyone making your own opinion. You know, you should be reading articles. You should be, you know, again, doing your own research. You should be going out there and uh, watching maybe videos in Spanish, you know, um, and just really, you know, doing more research on your own, relying on your own resources. You know, again, if you're going to listen to something that I say, you know, you should check it with other YouTubers and or other other information out there and see if it's valid or not. And, you know, it's same thing, you know, don't be just taking, you know, my word for it or any other YouTubers word for it, because, again, there's a bunch of people out there that are, uh, you know, they got their own agendas and they got their own reasons to tell you X, Y, Z. And, you know, I got my own haters out there and all that other stuff. But at the end of the day, it's up to you. It's really all up to you as to uh, for you to make your own decision. And I just listen to me and a guy with a horse. To me, it's it's funny as hell that there's other YouTubers out there that hate my guts. And they're, you know, talking about how I'm spreading constant misinformation and all this other stuff. And it's like, bro, guys, I, it's a guy with a horse. Again, how many times do I got to emphasize that? You know, you're discussing with a guy with a horse. Yeah, you know, I'm showing you stuff online that you can find yourself. But... You know, don't you think it's a lot more valid for you to do your own homework and do some own research and uh, look at the facts and look at that instead of just having some guy tell you X, Y, Z? So anything. And, and like, yeah, you know, I, all I'm trying to do is just help you guys, you know, um, make a better decision. All I'm, I'm just trying to give you guys as much information as possible. And so that way, when, you know, you see, let's say that you are trying to get residency only by qualifying through financial solvency and you're seeing how expensive you know or how much money they want you to make these days you know in order to qualify for that well maybe a video like this will give you a lot more context okay at the same time when uh you're seeing how many immigrants are also just coming to mexico and getting their mexican residency like that with they don't even have a passport from their home country you know what makes you think that you can't do something similar like again i know don't do the same thing but i'm just saying meaning what makes you think that you can't get your residency? 
I mentioned, I mentioned it many times before, financial solvency is just one way where you can buy your residency. But there's a billion ways, you know, I know, I'm being facetious, facetious, you know, a billion is too much. But there's a lot of ways in which you can get your residency legally, okay? Jesus, people, read something. Stop listening to other YouTubers out there telling you all these lies about not just residency, but everything else. You know, Mexico's poor. Mexico is, you know, third world country. Mexico's like, I mean, are you kidding me? You, you guys should watch some videos on Guadalajara, Mexico City, Monterrey. You know, forget the videos I make on Merida. Watch other videos on other cities and you're gonna, your jaw is going to drop, okay? You're going to be like, what the hell, man? This is like way more advanced than any U.S. city right now. Why does nobody know about this? Monterrey is like on the other side of the border. You can drive through it. Basically, if you're, if you're driving from Texas to Mexico, it's like the first major city you're going to bump into. It's right there in your face. Nobody talks about it. Mexico City is like the biggest city on the planet, give or take. I know the Chinese are giving it a run for its money. But, you know, Guadalajara, you know what I mean? It's becoming a freaking tech hub. It's becoming the Silicon Valley of Mexico. Nobody's talking about this. Nobody's going to tell you about this. You know, all they're telling you about is, you know, how, you know, life is so awesome out here, except, for, you know, for them, but you can't have an awesome life out here and how difficult it is, you know, for, for anyone to live out here and come out here. Again, you know, again, Tesla factories, and I could go on and on, all right? Anyways, all I'm saying is that the Mexican economy is getting stronger each and every day, and uh, you're currency your dollar your whatever is getting weaker next to it every day like i said you know if i'm going to japan or any of these expensive countries with pesos all of a sudden things are extremely cheap like again me and christian are finding out as we're watching other youtubers you know watching the travel videos and we're like what the hell man let's just go to japan you know <laughs> how cheap could it be i mean it's so cheap you know what i mean like jesus you know we're we're just a few years ago so expensive so but again in pesos in pesos all right. So anyways, I think I'll leave it there. And, um, you know, hopefully this video, you know, um, this information finds you well and you guys uh, can learn from it and uh, give more context to all the other information that you have out there about these uh, subjects. And again, it can help you out, make a better decision as to, you know, whether Mexico is a good idea or not. And if you are coming to Mexico, um, you know, to prepare accordingly. That's all. I mean, I love Mexico. Mexico is the best out here. So, um yeah, you know, you should definitely, uh, you know, uh, you know, again, just gather as much information as possible so you can make the best decision possible. Speaking of which, if you want to get more information, more free information, okay, all you got to do is go to my YouTube page, the same, you know, uh, page that I'm broadcasting this from right now. Go to my YouTube page and you can see all the videos that I do, you know, that I've done. And you can also see all the questions that I've answered. And if you want me to answer a question, Okay, just like I'm answering right now um, for you and for the audience, all you got to do is go to my website. In fact, if you click on the link that I provide in the chat, that I provide in the description of the video, that I provide in the comment section of the video. Um, damn, I thought I had it. There, anyways, anyways, whatever. Anyways, you click on the <laughs> click on that, and it's gonna take you straight to here. And uh, here, you're gonna see me pop up, and I'm gonna explain to you. In more detail how it all works but long story short all you got to do is send me an email with your question and then we come up with a donation and each question depending on the length of the answer will depend on the donation amount but this is a way in which you can help out the show you can help keep the lights on um and at the same time you know you can help the community we're all helping each other out remember that's a major thing that i tell you guys all about when i when i say come you know when i'm talking about moving to mexico is that community is a big thing out here so you better, might as well get used to it and uh, that's what we're trying to build the community here which i think we have a very strong uh community um out there you know we're all working together helping each other out but long story short what I'm saying is that this is a way in which you can help the show and you can also help out your fellow viewer um, with a, with an answer to a question that most people might have. So, again, this question, uh, you know, was basically just asked by Roger because he wanted to give me a donation and he wanted to know the answer and he wanted me to talk about it. So he did that. Um, but we have other questions that are a little bit more, you know, um, which I call it like informative or, or, or not, you know, was it real questions, you know, meaning like, you know, how can I grow a garden in this part of the, of the country? You know, how do I stop my neighbor's dog from barking? You know, um, what is a dating culture in Mexico like? You know, can I still retire on my pension? 
the way things are going. Um, you know, again, it's so many questions. You know, cryptocurrency. How are the police in Mexico? How is gay culture in Mexico? Um, you know, can I drive a U-Haul to Mexico? You know, dual citizenship. You know, uh, you know, how do you get your passport? How do you whatever? Okay, everything and anything. Okay, so whatever question you might have and you want to ask me, all you got to do is click on the link in the description, in the comment section, in the in the chat at the moment. You know, everywhere and anywhere I have it. I'm in fact, I'm gonna put it in the chat real quick, um, so you guys can have it. But long story short, just click there and it'll tell you exactly what you need to do. All right, and uh, I think that's it, guys. So you already know what's up, guys. If you like this kind of content. And you want to see more again just go to my youtube channel and you can see more <laughs> every single sunday i drop a video every sunday morning i drop a video hey, depending on, on your time zone but anyways every sunday i drop a brand new video um i got a bunch coming up they're really good i hope you like them um i hope you guys are liking the business videos i'm doing i hope you guys are liking the house tour videos i'm doing i hope you like the questions i'm doing if you want to see more of the questions okay join us every thursday afternoon where i do these questions i do three questions because that's all i have time for i answer three questions per week all right and uh we do them every thursday afternoon and i already told you how to do it and every sunday we drop a video and and spoiler alert i don't know when but in the future we're going to be doing a podcast like we used to do only better all right so remember i used to have a podcast and all that other stuff talking about all kinds of things none related to mexico um so we'll have that coming up in the very very future all right so okay guys i think that's it so guys you already know the deal if you like this kind of content don't forget to please like please subscribe please share please hit the bell icon but more importantly than anything else please stay awesome have a wonderful wonderful rest of your day wonderful weekend and i hope you guys are having a wonderful beginning to the summer and uh hope you guys are enjoying june july everything's coming up um and that's it all right guys oh and the last thing i'm gonna say is that um well we'll talk about it in the next next live stream but i'm bringing back the the live stream specials okay remember i was taking them off for a while putting them on spotify whatever a whole thing just happened so long story short i'm, I'm putting them back on and i'm also gonna you know what, what we're gonna do is just i'm gonna leave it there until i do the next one so remember once a month i do a question and answer session okay where i'm just here for two three hours talking to you guys answering anything any question whatever and um i i was taking them i, I had a whole thing where i was I had to take them off i was getting censored i was getting in trouble whatever so um what i'm gonna be doing is that i'm gonna leave it okay for a month and then once the next one comes out and we're going to replace it okay so for the time being if you still want to check out the last question and answer live stream i did you can go to my chat sorry go to my channel check it out it's it's there again all right for you guys to watch and then in the next few weeks i'm going to be doing another one and then this one's going to be gone all right so you already know the deal guys if you like this kind of content you already know don't forget to please like please subscribe please share please hit the bell icon but more importantly than anything else please stay awesome Thanks again for all your love and support. Thanks again to all the patrons and members and everyone else out there. And uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Love you guys. Peace out. Laters. Bye.